This video is going to help demonstrate customizing, sorting, and filtering your activity ledger query grid. Also included in the demo will be how to use the advanced query and also how to create a custom report based off of your filter queries using the report option. So what you're currently seeing is a customized activity ledger grid for somebody who is processing receipts. So for those of you that are doing the receipt or refund processing at your district, this style of grid may be helpful in querying existing transactions. So in here, you can see that I've included the date and by default, the activity ledger grid will always default by the most recent transaction. The type is a very key column because that will allow you to filter by transaction. So in our example, if I want to see just receipts, I would type in REC for receipt or I would type in REF for refund. Um, I've also included the receipt number and the receipt type. So receipt transactions can be straight receipts or reduction of expenditures. So in order to filter just down to those types, I've added the type column, uh, the line number of the receipt, the refund number, the line number of the refund. Um, for refunds with checks, I've included the vendor and the check number, the amount of the receipt item and the account code that it's tied to. So in here, I'm going to do an example of going in and searching for um, specific receipts for the um, fiscal year. And so it saved my last um, search result here, which is 171-2022.630-2023. And that dot dot allows you to put in a range filter. So it pulled up all of the transactions on my grid within that range. Um, but I want to narrow that down to just receipts. So I'm just going to type in REC. And that is going to include just the receipts that were entered in this fiscal year. And so you'll see over in the type column that I have some RCs for receipts and RXs. So if I wanted to take this a step further and just find the reduction of expenditure transactions, I can type it in RX. And right now this is giving me about a, a little over a dozen different reduction of expenditure receipts that were done this year. Um, obviously, because it's a straight, you know, it's a receipt that we're talking about, um, in particular reduction of expenditure, these columns here um, would be blank because they deal with refund side of things. So that's one way to filter, easy way to find existing transactions if you need to. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to change up my grid to reflect more of an expenditure style grid so I can look at purchase orders and checks. So in order to make changes, I need to uh, move over to the more column and click on that. I'm going to add the PO number, the PO item number, and the invoice number. Just kind of scrolling down through here, I still need the check. I'm going to remove any reference to receipts and refunds. Leave the amount. Now, the type is still important. Um, I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to find invoiceable and probably the status. That's going to tell me um, if it's like, for example, the invoice, it was partially filled, completely filled. Um, the vendor name I'm going to keep. And then I'm going to scroll down here and underneath the receipt and refund areas, I'm going to remove any references to them. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to exit out of here, it will reset the grid. And so now I have all of those columns that I selected in the more displayed on my grid, but I want to make some changes here um, and resort this so that it makes um, sense to what I'm doing. If I'm responsible for processing purchase orders, invoices, and checks, I want to move things around a little bit, um, maybe in accordance to the expenditure steps purchase order, invoice, and then check. So I'm going to leave the date and the type fine. Um, the vendor too, I think I'm just going to leave that there, but I'm going to move the PO over and the PO item number over. 
as well as the invoice number. And I'll leave the check there. I'll leave the amount in the full account code and the invoiceable, but the status here, I'm going to move that over and I'm gonna put that probably here, in front of the check here. Okay, so I believe I have my grid sort order um, the way I want it. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how you can easily query and be able to tell what has happened to a specific transaction, especially a purchase order. You know, I processed the PO, what has taken place since the PO has been processed? Has it been invoiced? Has there been checks cut against it? So using the activity ledger will, will provide an easy way for you to see the history of what has happened to that purchase order. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter in a specific PO number. And um, so it brings up the information. And again, it always brings it up by the most recent transaction. Well, what I find easier is to change this up by the order of the expenditure process, PO invoice disbursement. So I'm going to resort this by clicking on the type column in order to place it in that particular order. And because I've selected a specific purchase order, I am also going to do a secondary sort by the item number so I can see them in sequential order. So I'm just gonna hold down my shift key and click on that column to do a secondary sort. So you'll see my first sort is type and then my second sort is PO number. So that way I can see the PO order by each line number, and then the invoice, and then the disbursement. So just by resorting these and moving the columns around, I can easily see what has happened to this purchase order. So let's talk about that. And so obviously it's all within the same vendor and there have been two items for that purchase order. One was for 250 and the second one was for 25. And there have been, um, it looks like two invoices process against it. Item one has the same, item one and two are under one invoice number. And then there was another invoice for item one against a different invoice number. And from looking at those for that first invoice, INV 02304, there was a partial made on the first item and a full made on the second item. And then on the second invoice for item number one, there was a partial made on that one. Then looking down to the disbursement, it looks like this invoice was paid. And so, um, and it's showing here the check number tied to it. And the one was obviously for $50 and the other one was for 25. So again, looking at this, I had my first item was for 250, my second item on the PO was for 25. I did a partial against the first item for $50, and then I did another partial against the first item for $100 on a separate invoice. I did a full on the second item of the PO for 25, and I made payments for that invoice INV 02304 for $50.20. So that's telling me right there that out of the 250 for the first item, I have done $150 worth of filling. Um, it, to me, the $100 is still outstanding. I don't see a check, a disbursement for that. So this must be a payables at this point, but the other $50 was paid on. So this $250, I still have um, what looks to be $100 left to pay and fill on that particular line item. For item number two, it was for $25. I completely filled it and I completely paid it. So that item has been paid off. So that explains also too why my invoiceable is showing false for that item, but it's still showing true for the first item because that first item is still outstanding. I still have more money in there that I need to fill and expend. I'm gonna show you a different example. I'm gonna get rid of this purchase order. 
And I'm going to go down and look for transactions for a particular vendor. And I want to see what has been expended. And so I'm going to use my type in my vendor field for these. And so the type, I'm going to type in DISB for disbursement. So it's just looking at disbursements, checks that have been cut. And now I'm going to go ahead and enter in that particular vendor. And so this shows me right away what I have done against this vendor since um, uh, with all of the historical data on this instance. So as you can see, I have transactions dated back in uh, 2011 and 2012 against this vendor. And the only other transaction I see here where a check's been cut is from this uh, past month. And so this was for, um, and you can see also what purchase order they're tied to and the item, the invoice, and what is the status of those? Well, obviously these older ones have been reconciled, um, but um, this one right here is still outstanding. So this check has not been reconciled yet. Here is the check number tied to it and the amounts, the full account code that was tied to each of these and the invoiceable status. So um, I, I would imagine these um, older checks will no longer be invoiceable. However, this one that um, a check was cut against, this is indicating to me that invoiceable true, that the PO tied to this must still have um, items on there that haven't been completely paid yet. So that purchase order is still outstanding. My next example, my last one here on this expenditure grid is when we've re uh, received this question, just trying to narrow down by account code dimension transactions against those account codes. So this is where this full account code is kind of a favorite of mine um, by adding that to the activity ledger grid. I can filter if I want to find all of the transactions for the general fund in an object code of 510, I can do that via the full account code. So you're going to be using uh, the percent sign as your wild card. So what I can do is I said general fund, type in 001 hyphen. I don't have a particular function, so I'm going to use my wild card hyphen and then 510 hyphen. And then I'm going to use wild card again for the rest of the dimensions of the account code. And you'll notice here when I do that, that's going in there and um, filtering this down to just those specific ones. I'm gonna get rid of the disbursement here. Um, just so you can see everything, it's gonna pull any type of purchase orders, invoices, checks um, that are tied to this particular account code or these dimensions. So if I kind of scroll down, you see that we've got some function codes of 2310, some of 1930. That's where this wild card comes into play. It's looking for any function, but it's narrowing down and filtering in just the 001 fund and the 510 object. If I wanted just 510, I could change this 001 to a percent sign as well. And it will show me all transactions with just a 510 object code. Again, if I wanted to filter this again by just um, what's been expended, I can type in disbursement again, and it's going to um, filter that even more so. And also, if I just want to find you know, what's been done this year, I can go in and put in my date range filter. And then it displays that. And if I want to sort this by the most recent activity, I can just click on the date and click one more time here. It's, it assorts ascending and then descending. And then it shows me exactly what items that have been, checks have been cut against it using this these particular dimensions of the account code for the current fiscal year. So a great way, um, the activity letters is just a great way of being able to go in and find specific transaction data. Okay, so I'm going to clear these out. And so you want to make your activity ledger your own. You want to go in and add or remove columns that, you know, make sense to you. Um, you know, if you are, 
you know, involved in doing the purchase orders or creating disbursements for your district, and you aren't involved in receipts at all, then um, removing the receipt columns would make sense because you're, you're never going to use them. Um, so the same way if um, you're doing just the receipt processing um, and you're not going to be using purchase order or invoice information, you can remove these columns um, so that you can easily find the things that you're looking for. What we're going to move on to next is the advanced query. And so this would be used, especially if you're trying to query on something that you're um, kind of looking at um, periodically or frequently. Um, let's say you want to go in and find all of the travel POs that are still outstanding in your district. And you want to run that, you know, every so often, maybe like once a month, instead of just, you know, trying to remember where to put that information in on the filter row, you, what you can do is underneath the advanced query, you can create the query in here and you can save this query and then apply it anytime you need that information. So let's use that uh, outstanding POs for travel as an example here. And so um, the first thing I need to do is um, narrow that down by the account code dimensions used. Maybe it's the general fund, maybe it's other funds, but you always know that you use an object code of the 430 for your travel type of purchase orders. So I need to go into the properties over here and select that account code. So I'm going to go ahead and click on code and select that specific dimension. I'm going to double click on object and it's going to pull it up. And then from here, what I'm going to do is enter in like. And then, like I said, it's a 430. I'm not sure if it's 430, 431, 439. So I am just going to put in a 4-3 to basically say, find any transactions with an object code beginning with 43. And so the next thing is I'm looking for purchase order type of transactions. So I'm going to scroll down until I find my type field. Remember the type field down here? I'm searching for that in here. So I'll double click and then equals. I want to say equals because I'm looking at just the POs. And then the third thing that I need to do is I'm looking for outstanding. That would be what we consider the invoiceable. So I want to go and find my invoiceable option, double click, equals true. And so here's my filter. So instead of entering it in here, I have it up in here. And then what I can quickly do then is apply this query to make sure that it's working correctly before I save it. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on apply and see what happens. And if I look at my results down here from applying it, it looks like everything looks good. Um, the type is showing PO, just like I told it to right here. Um, the object code, it says uh, 43, it begins with 43. And as I scroll down here, I've got some 439s, 432s. So that appears to be working correctly. And also my invoiceable equals true. So this query that I created up here looks good. Now I wanna save it, I wanna give it a name. So I'm gonna enter that in here and I'll call it OS Outstanding POs for Travel. And I'm going to click on save. And when I do that, then it will be stored underneath my saved queries here. So when I'm ready, if I run this in another month, I can open up the advanced query, go right to this particular stored one that I've saved. So I would select that. And then I could click on apply query and see the results. And it will show me at that moment what outstanding purchase orders are still out there uh, related to travel. Okay. The last thing that I wanna show you is how to create a query and generate a custom report from it. It's, it's that easy. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to click on advanced query again to turn that off. And I'm going to also just refresh, kind of just refresh everything. And you'll notice when I do that, 
nothing changed here. It did not change my columns. They still stayed the same columns in the same order. Now, if I had any filter information in here, it would have refreshed that. But otherwise, nothing else changes. So if I logged off and then came back in a couple hours later, it would look the same. So it, you're not going to lose any customization that you have made. Okay. So for this last one here, what I would like to do is create an invoice report via my filters in my advanced query ledger. So what I'm going to do is I first want to kind of look at the columns I have in here because the columns that are listed are the columns that are going to appear on my custom report that I'm creating. So if I want to add or remove any of these, I can. Um, so I'm looking here. The only thing I can think of is for my invoices, because I am creating an outstanding invoice report by vendor. That's what I want. I want to be able to go in and create a report of invoices that are sitting out there waiting to get paid. And I want to be able to put in a specific vendor and just create a report by that vendor. Or I can also on the report, if I don't put in a particular vendor, I don't create a parameter for that vendor, it'll at least sort by the vendor. And I can see all those outstanding invoices that still need to be processed, sorted by vendor. So, you know, I've got, you know, those fields in here, I've got the invoice uh, number in here, I've got the vendor number. So all of that's good, but I really don't have right now a way to indicate um, that any of these invoices are outstanding, meaning they're payables. Um, I don't have anything in here indicating that invoiceable is really for my purchase order, not my, in, my, not my invoices that are waiting uh, checks to be cut against them. So I'm going to go down to more column. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the actual invoice area here and invoice item. And there is an outstanding option field here. I'm going to include that one because that's going to tell me um, if it's in, if outstanding is true, that means that that invoice is still outstanding awaiting for me to cut a check against it. Okay, so I've got the fields probably more than I need on my report, but that's the fun part. Once we go in and create the report for whatever I filter on in here, I can go in and then remove fields um, and things from my report definition to clean it up a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to go in and make sure that I'm trying to create the parameters for my report. So I have to enter in information in the filter row for those parameters that I want created. And so obviously I just want invoices. I don't want purchase order or check information on my report because this is a outstanding invoice list. So I'm going to definitely include INV. And then I also want to make sure that my outstanding here is true so that it just pulls those um, invoices that are basically um, considered payables at this point. And it looks like I have three. And then another thing that I have to do in order to create the vendor parameter is I have to put in something in the vendor field. Um, even though my report is going to be set up to allow me to enter in a vendor number, I still need to create that parameter setting. So I'm just going to go ahead and type in one of these uh, vendor numbers here equals 36. Perfect. Um, so I really don't care about the results at this point. I'm just trying to create the shell of my template report. So I've got my parameters. So I've got, it's going to be any invoices that are outstanding where I can enter in a vendor number. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. So I'm going to click on report. And I don't really want to generate it. I want to save the, re the uh, filtering that I've done and create a report out of this. And I will call it Outstanding Invoices by Vendor. And I'm going to click on Save Report. Tells me that the report's been saved to my report manager grid. 
Like I said, I'm not going to generate this because it's not what I need at this point. And what I'm going to do now <clears throat> is go into report under report manager. And I'm going to look for that report, which it shows it right here. And I'm going to open up that report definition. <clears throat> and so what you'll see right away underneath select properties are all the columns that were from my activity ledger grid. So those are all listed in here. And when I generate a report, you know, if there are some of these where I feel like they really aren't necessary, I can remove them. The configure filters. So what values I entered in the filter row has created my configure filter properties. Remember, I entered in the type of invoice, outstanding equals true, just outstanding invoices, and then the vendor number. If I hover over that, you know, it'll tell me that this is the vendor number. Now it says equals 36. Well, I need to change this part because I don't want to generate an outstanding invoices by vendor and it always only include vendor 36. This is the part I need to change. So my filter value will need to be removed. And my number is going to be a little different because basically what I'm doing is I'm going in and wanting to create this as a one of and then enter in the filter value. Now, I think this is the part that's probably the trickiest is how, what, what do I put in here? Um, it, because it does have to be specific. And so my theory is when in doubt, find an existing report out there that contains this parameter of the vendor. So an easy way to do that is to take a copy of this URL and create and open up, open up it, open up the same in your instance in another um, browser here. So now I've got two of them open. And so what I'm going to do here is in this one, I'm going to go out there and find some existing reports that have that vendor parameter already defined that I can just copy and paste it. In order to do that, the easiest thing to do is filter on the report query. And so in here, if you don't have the report query as a column, you just go under more and select it. I'm going to search for vendor. And so I'm going to open this up a little bit so we can see more of it. And basically, I'm looking for any query, existing query on a report that has the vendor number in it. And so just kind of, you know, looking through here, um, this one pops out of me because I see vendor number right away. That's the field. So I think that this report probably has a query already set up to enter in a vendor number. In order to verify that, I'm going to open up that definition real quick. I'm going to go to generate report and look at the query options. And that's exactly what I'm looking for the ability to enter in a vendor. So be, and so I know that that's the query parameter I want. So I just go to configure filters, find that one, which it should be this one. Yep, vendor number one of, and I'm gonna copy this entire thing. I'm gonna go back to my other instance and I am going to paste that in here. Basically that did the work for me. And so at this point now, I think um, that part looks good. I've got my properties, which I may get rid of a couple of these. We'll see once I do a test run. I have my filters and now I'm gonna to go to generate report. And looking at this, the first thing that I'm gonna do is change this name of it to outstanding invoices by vendor so that it shows that in the title of the report. And I'm gonna go over to my query options and perfect, that's exactly what I wanted. So I can put in a specific vendor if I need to. Um, so I'll go ahead and do that so we can you know, test this out. And I'm gonna put in, let's see, 9415 I think was one of the vendors. 
And then my sort options. Because this came from the activity ledger, as I mentioned before, the activity ledger default sorts by the transaction date. And so that's what it's going to show in here. Well, if I want to change this up so that it sorts possibly by vendor first, and then with vendor, the invoices within that vendor. I think that's how I wanted this to sort. So I'm going to go ahead and move my type over. Oh, I don't want type. I want invoice. So I'm going to move that back. <laughs> Sorry. Invoice number. And I'm not sure about date. I'm going to move this back over here. So I've got invoice and I want to control break by, uh, I don't think I'm going to control break by the invoice number. I definitely want the vendor. I'm going to put that above invoice and I do want to control break on vendor. So right now the report is going to sort first by vendor and control break by vendor, then within vendor by invoice number. Now, if I would prefer to have the actual date too, I can add that as well, but let's just take care of it, you know, and just leave it go for now. And let's generate this and see what we get. So I'm going to click on generate. And looking at this here, it looks a little busy to me just because I have a lot of information and I'm in a portrait PDF file here. Um, so it is definitely subtotaling by the vendor and then with vendor, probably the invoice number. There's only one, so I'm guessing it would. Um, so I've got the date. I've got the type here. Well, I always, I know that this is always going to be invoices. That type came again from the activity ledger. So that might be one field that I would like to get rid of. The vendor number looks good. Definitely want that. Uh, the PO, definitely the information in regard, you know, related to that invoice, PO information, the check information. Um, if I want to, you know, leave the status to show that it was a partial a payment against that invoice that's outstanding. I can leave that in there if I want. Um, the check number, there really shouldn't be a check number because these should only be invoices that are waiting for checks to be cut against them. So that is another um, field column that I could get rid of, clean up. And if I go over to invoiceable, that doesn't make any sense because we're not looking at outstanding purchase orders, we're looking at outstanding invoices. So I will definitely remove this field. And I'll probably remove the outstanding too, because I've already have that noted. This is definitely an outstanding um, invoice report. So I feel like that really isn't important. It's kind of redundant. So um, I'm going to get rid of that as well. So right now I'm going to go back into my properties on my report and I'm going to remove the type for sure. Um, I'm going to remove the check number, the invoiceable and the outstanding. So I'm going to go back and I'm going back to my select properties. And so I'm going to remove the type. So I'm going to go over there, remove that. I am going to remove the, what did I say? The check number and the last two, invoiceable and outstanding. And so I'm gonna go back now to generate my report and I'm gonna generate it again. This time I am going to leave the vendor numbers blank um, and see what kind of report I, I get. I should, I remember when I, looked at it in the activity uh, ledger query, I had three payables. Um, so those are the three vendors that I should have on my report. So I'm not going to put in a specific vendor, generate this. And so here are my outstanding invoices. Um, so let's take a look here again. I've got um, the dates. So it looks a lot better because everything is on, but um, the sorting didn't appear um, to be um, on here. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to go back to my sort options here. And it did revert them back. I believe this is a, a JIRA issue that we have. Um, it did clear those out accidentally. I probably should have saved it. 
and it's probably my fault, um, but I believe I'm gonna go back in and just quickly add those again. So I'm gonna put in the vendor in here and also the invoice. Invoice is gonna go under here. I'm gonna move the date back here. It's always good to see how this sort works again. And I'm gonna control break by vendor. And then it's going to sort then by invoice after that. And I'm going to save the changes that I've made. Done a lot of work in here, so let's save it. And now let's generate this. Again, I didn't put any specific vendor number in here. So here then that looks a little bit better. Um, what it's doing is it's showing me the vendor subtotaling by that vendor. I only have one invoice against that one. And here's the information related to it. And then here's my second vendor. I only have one invoice against that. And then my third vendor. And so obviously if I had um, a vendor with multiple invoices that are outstanding, those would all be displayed underneath that vendor. Okay, um, that's all I wanted to show you. So just to recap, what we were looking at here is um, we first went into the activity ledger query and we covered how to customize your grid. Um, and we did an example of a receipt grid versus an expenditure type of grid. Um, we also went into the advanced query where I showed you how to create a query in there instead of using the filter row and saving that query so that you can use it over and over. And then the last thing we did was created a custom report using the activity ledger query. We went in and filtered for outstanding invoices by vendor and basically generated a report, which then is permanently stored here on our report manager, outstanding invoices by vendor. And then all we did is we opened this up and tweaked it a little bit. We tweaked the properties, we changed the filtering a little bit so that it didn't filter on just a specific uh, vendor number. And then we did some sorting changes in order to um, change the sorting so that it appeared um, it made a bit more sense when I was generating the report to sort it by the vendor. Okay, well, I would thank you all for, um, you know, listening in on this video, and I hope that that was helpful for you. Thank you.